It's recording, like right? And so I might as well get a wild tribe in here. So hey guys, Colin Stuckert here, founder, CEO. We got another wild tribe chat. We got Logan Fusion Lean over here. Links will be below. We got Bailey Mullins. Did I say yeah, right? Mullins. And the Mindless Millennial Podcast. Again, links will be below. And we're gonna go through some rapid fire questions. So enjoy. Logan, question number one: the skill that every entrepreneur needs. Like physical skill or mental it, skill? Anything. They need to understand the process, not the quick fix, not the the goal, yes, you need to understand the goal, but you need to understand the full process. That's the word I literally, or two words I say every day. The process, the process, mm. the process, like a million times a day. So the work rather than the destination, right? Yeah. You have to kind of, you got to balance both. Yeah. Right? Bailey, what would be your answer? The skill that every entrepreneur needs. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit different with this one. Um, I'm going to, maybe not every entrepreneur, but I would say vision. I would say you need to, if you're going to be a true innovator and entrepreneur, you need to have this it factor where you can create this thing that it was coined by Steve Jobs called the reality distortion field. And basically take something that was previously believed as it, can, it didn't exist, it wouldn't exist, it's impossible, and be able to make it possible and lead people there. So you gotta, you gotta see what people aren't seeing, mm, right? Exactly. So you gotta yeah. see your version of reality, right? That others might not sure. see. Sure, and bring uh, people in on that. Right. I would say, my number one skill every entrepreneur needs is to be able to deal with stress constructively, mm -hmm. right? Because stuff breaks, you gotta pay taxes, you gotta pay bills, the government comes after you, you get sued. You, I mean, literally everything I just named, <laughs> it's happened to me. Uh, people, your your ex-partner steals $7,000 from you. Uh, coaches in your gym steal hundreds of clients and open up competing gyms and try to under undercut your prices. I've literally had every single thing you can possibly imagine happen, owning multiple brick and mortars, you know, I've been doing this thing for 12 years now, right? And so if you can't figure out how to take all those things that, that break and that go wrong and funnel that into motivation, you will get crushed. I know we're going like okay. off of script here, but I wanted to ask you a There's question. There's no script. Go for it. What, <laughs> what made Wild Food stick that didn't stick with these other businesses you started? Well, the other businesses were profitable businesses, but they weren't scalable enough. So I had a juice bar and a gym, nice little business, right? It paid for my life for like five years, right? Mm -hmm. Then we had the CrossFit gym and that was good, made money, you know, it was enjoyable, I was making a difference, but it wasn't something that could reach millions of people, right? Mm -hmm. And so I always knew that I needed to move out of Fort Myers, Florida. I needed to go west where the people were had cool ideas, were doing cool shit, right? And so I just knew ultimately that I had to go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And because I knew that, I kind of divested myself slowly, slowly, slowly. And then eventually right. like packed up my car and was like, I'm driving to Texas to see what happens, right? Mm -hmm. And the plan was if I didn't like Texas, I would go to Colorado. And then if I didn't really wanna stay there, I'd go to North Carolina and end up there because I love the Carolinas. And I basically got here in Austin and I got an apartment a week later, wow. right? And so nice. that's, that's pretty much the baseline story. All right, so question number two. One book that changed your life and a very brief why, Logan. Oh gosh, um, it's so hard to answer. Um, you gotta pick one. How to win friends and influence people. Well, I'm gonna give a different answer because I think I, I I think I answered that same one. Eh. I'm gonna say probably probably Relentless by Tim Grover. Uh -huh. See, I wanted to read that because I saw you post that. Such a good book. And Tim yeah. Grover actually responded to every message I tagged him in. Oh really? That's yeah. awesome. But wow. yeah, no, basically, uh, I, my my high school basketball coach actually gave me that book mm -hmm. and it was like, Logan, read this book. What's and the was, premise in like a brief synopsis? It's just there, there's there's you know there, there's three different categories of different people. There's people who sit and talk about things but they don't actually do it yep mm. there's people who sit and, and and think about it but don't do it but then debating themselves mm -hmm. and then there's people who are actually doing it mm -hmm. and there's I, f I forget the three names of it but he basically goes into these three categories in every single chapter and like you know talking about the difference between Dwayne Wade Michael Jordan like the best athletes on the face of the earth and why are they the be best athletes because they have mm. a relentless mentality it's not like I'm born mm. that way, or like you know, I'm just I, I'm naturally skilled. They like, always show up after. They always stay later at practice. They show up earlier. Oh well, they do like Kobe. Yeah, he like, talks about the work that they because yeah. he trained them. So you talk yeah. about the work that they put in. That's just like not human, like you know. Yeah. Mm. Larry so. Bird. They asked him right after like a successful season, like so, how long are you gonna you know what are you gonna do in your off season? He's like, well, I got about a week, and then I'm I'm back to training. Yeah, and like while a lot of the other athletes like just. They'll eat like crap. They'll they'll relax. Whatever. He 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 got right back to it because that's what he loved to do. Yeah. Right. You got to do one book. How to get a meeting with anyone, anybody. That's the name of the book. Yeah. I've never heard of that. So hmm. it's it's about contact marketing, uh, which basically kind of overlays how basically how you would get a meeting with anyone. Yeah. Um, 
And you've used those techniques to network with people? Yeah, so one of the things it actually says in there, and it's kind of an older book, so it said, it, it, podcasts really weren't a thing yet, but mm -hmm. it said, start an internet radio show. Um, and I had already started the podcast before I read the book. So once I read that book, it like solidified, okay, I'm doing something right. That's and like, that's the true value of the podcast. It's not any sponsors I get. It's not any money I make off of it. It's not even the opportunities I get from it. It's specifically documenting like these real life valuable experiences with another person. And so let's like, use Bobby Steiner, for example. Okay. Uh, very wealthy, very successful guy, world champion bull rider in the 70s sat down with him for almost two hours. And so now I can transcribe that podcast, make it into a little ebook, 10 best tips from Bobby Steiner. Now when it's his birthday, I send it to him. That is the most powerful networking tool there ever was and ever will be because he'll remember that forever, that gift. That's cool. So the book is called? How to Get It Meeting with Anybody. That's Anybody. awesome. Yeah. So I gotta come up with a book, don't I? So there's too many books to, let me see, I usually put the best ones up here. I'm just gonna grab Sapiens to make it simple. Uh, this is kind of the, this is a great entry into evolutionary biology and to just the history of, of humans, right? Anyone can be really effective in life if they don't understand their body, their genes, and why they do what they do, why they do what they do, <laughs> right? And so, like for example, why is the human psyche drawn to these little dopamine hits of the phone, of, of notifications. Why do we want more likes and comments, whatever, right? Mm. All of that is explained by evolutionary biology and psychology. So if you don't understand your body and, and where you came from and, 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 and how you're designed by nature, just like a carnivore eats meat and it hunts and does these things, right? You know, cows graze, they do the certain things, they, their digestion reflects that, their teeth reflect that. Humans also have a natural diet. We have a natural way we live. We walk a lot, we should move a lot. If we sit too much, we get sick, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so Sapiens, I mean, it's one of those books that can literally change your perspective on life when you really understand the human animal and where they come from. So mm. it's, it's one of my favorite books. I wouldn't say it's like my top book, but for the category, it probably is the top book. All right, next one, favorite keto food. And so this could be low carb because mm -hmm. I know Logan is easy because he's like the keto guru. We're <laughs> we're like keto users. We yeah. use keto, right? But but so we'll do like a low carb food or whatever. Okay. Right? There you go. Okay. Favorite keto food. One fa food. Fa favorite keto food. One food. I'm gonna try and think of something that I haven't really like answered to people. Well then Bailey, you go and we'll give him time to come up with a really awesome okay. amazing well, answer. Well my, my no hold oh, on. Oh you know hold what this? <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> my time under pressure. When I'm under pressure is when is when I get all the right, job done. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to say this. So my friend Anthony, okay, he made Venice venison. Love venison. La venison beef meatballs. Wow. Mm. I don't know how he did this. It was on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I had it. And I was like, please make that for me because that was just incredible. So I'm gonna figure out how he made that. Heck, Ground he, venison. Yeah, I mean that's it's what it was yeah. in meatball form. It's yeah, you so gotta find someone that delicious. can get it wild locally. That's like Monsel really hunts good. and when yeah. he makes some, I, and I get I get some too. But you basically just you make the meatballs and the natural fat and the flavor from the wild game because it's amazing. It's just like you don't even have to add anything to it, right? Yeah, no, it was so good. So yeah. that's what mine is mm. venison. That's a that's a steal right there. <laughs> Venison's amazing. Any, yeah, anything wild. How can you top uh, that? I mean, it can be anything. Any low carb favorite food. Like if you had to pick you know, one, like I, I was trying to think of like some type of like bar or like some nuts or something like that, but what popped in my head was like sautéed Brussels sprouts. There you go. It's like okay. candy. You add a, like one thing I used to do. I don't really do this as much anymore. But you you, you add like olive oil because I use coconut oil now. Mm -hmm. But if you use olive oil with Brussels sprouts, sea salt, and then some Worcestershire sauce, it it tastes like candy. So you, it's because you're caramelizing, yeah. caramelizing those natural sugars. Yeah, so good. Uh, my favorite keto food would probably be either oysters or sardines. Mm. And not because, I, I, I mean, oysters are great. They taste great. Like if you do it right, like you can really yeah. like oysters, right? Uh, sardines, and eh, it's kind of a, uh, a, it's kind of a developed flavor or a, you know, like tolerable with enough time. I know you kind of like them, right? You can definitely- Oysters? I've had them- Sardines. Oh Sar yeah, sardines I love. Yeah, I don't love them, but I love what they do for me. Sardines, mm -hmm. oysters are some of the most nutrient dense, well-rounded foods found in nature. In fact, I think uh, oysters might be the most nutrient dense food in, in, in the world. Like it, iodine, fats, all the things that are there, all the minerals, the B12, et cetera, is there. Uh, sardines, another thing, because it's a whole fish and it's a fatty fish. You're eating the omega-3s, mm. you're eating the protein. Every single piece of the animal that you're eating is just 
what your body needs. Right. right. For travel, right. Well, yeah, and you can pack you don't have them to and cook it. Yeah, exactly. You literally eat it out of the can, some salt, or add some mustard or whatever. Sriracha mm -hmm. is actually really good. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, let's do let's do one more and then wrap it up for for today. Uh, well, we did that one. We did that one. Did keto that one. food snack. We did. Yeah, we did the snack. I'm just gonna say hot sauce, the best keto food. <laughs> I bought some some sweet sauce. Well, what's today. a brand or a style? Because there's a million different of that, right? I, I like that Austin-based company. It has a tiny bit of sugar in it. Uh, the bird, yeah, something bird or yellow That's bird really or good. something like that. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they do put cane sugar in it, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, what's the question? So, like, kind of a pain. I don't know. I'm coming up with another question. Okay, how about? All right, this is a good one to end on. Actually, we'll end on two of these. So, on a scale of one to ten, how confident are you, Logan? Times a million. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm not, okay. Like, okay, so like I want. But but be practical, right? Because no one's 100 yeah. percent confident. Like we always have things that we feel like we okay. can do better on. Okay, so I'm gonna put it this way. I I don't know if anybody's really gonna get this, but me, I'm one out of ten confident. Okay, so that side of me that's one out of ten, mm. I take the other side and bring it ten out of ten. It's 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 a hit or miss. Either I go to the side that's one out of ten, or I go to the ten out of ten. So basically, I have to want the success more than the fear. The fear is there. You're, you're like basically, the fear can control you or the success stands. So the fear the is the one. Can. The fear is a one, and and the ten is like what the. the I doing would or? say they're both ten out of ten. Oh, excuse me. Like my confidence is a one out of ten on one side. Confidence is ten out of ten on the other side. It's what's whatever, it's whatever one I choose. So by choosing the confidence one, I have to get the work done. I have to do the work. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm focused on the ten out of ten one that I to that I want to achieve the success is by. Doing the freaking work. So every time you 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 have a lack of confidence, you basically take that as a sign as a pure failure by Jimmy that you have to get it done, I, I, and then I move it, to the confidence side. I, I use it. To so my it's advantage. binary. It's either you're confident or you're not confident. Yeah. So anytime mm -hmm. I have that sort of like you know, uh, it's not that good. Like it's just, like I just do the five second rule in my head, and then boom, I get the mm -hmm. job done. What's like, the five second rule? You gotta read the book. I did. Amazing. I did. I'm asking rhetorically. I'm yeah. asking for them. Okay. <laughs> so it's like you count in your head, like, you know, you know you need to do something, you're thinking about it, and then you just go five, four, three, two, one, and then boom, you just get it done. You just do it. You just take action. You don't you don't analyze, you don't think about it. Yeah. You just do it. And that's how you know you're around like three good people to be around that will push you forward is because we've all read like at least one of the same books mm -hmm. uh, with the five second rule, which is, you know, it, it, it's something that I already did naturally. But reading that kind of solidifies, okay, this has it, this has it, a certain process involved into it that, that works really well. Um, personally, I don't count down in my head, but I just go. Like, it's just, Bailey, go now. And I go. I think even five seconds, you could, get in that, you could think too much. Right. It's, yeah, that's you know, true. You know, it's kind of like, if you think you should do it, you just go do it. Mm -hmm. And you just literally, walk, like, say, decision, yeah. I'm walking to do this thing. And then, like, you figure out how to go. Yeah. Right? Because most of the time... And if it's we going up, out. if it's going up to someone, usually it'll go well. And if it doesn't, it's so weird how that is because yeah. most because here's the thing, dude. <laughs> like even for like a guy to approach a girl, most people don't want to be rude, mm. right? So there's already this social imp impetus to like be nice. So if you're approaching yeah. people, even if like your guy going up to a girl, and that can be kind of socially awkward, like she's still gonna probably be nice to you, mm. even if you get rejected hardcore. There's yeah. very few females that will just be like you know. I mean, some will be like, creep, get away, creep, yeah. creepy, creepy. Like some of them will be like that, but that's good because you don't want to talk to those girls anyways. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know? most people are longing for human connection. That too. There you go. And most, you flatter them by going up to them. And you if you're afraid them. because of their attractiveness level, not saying there's a scale, the beauty oh, of the eye of the oh, beholder. Yeah. There's a scale. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time, people aren't walking up to other people. People aren't yeah, going people out of their way to talk to people. So when you do that, it's unique. It's mm -hmm. new. It's fun to mm -hmm. them. So so I would not be afraid to do that whatsoever. Yeah. And people, if they were to embarrass you, pe you know how people are. They feel bad that they would do that. So yeah. there's, I'm telling you, they want to not make you feel bad, even if they want you to go away, right? So I just think it's something you should do. And and yeah. plus, life is better when you're fo you're more internally focused instead of worrying about what other people think and pleasing them or whatever, right? Do because mm. you want to do it, right? As long as you're offering value, of course. Don't yeah. do anything illegal or mm. bad or whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> Did I answer this question? What no, was the question again? No. It was uh, confidence how confident. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm like, at, okay, so I'm at like a nine on the things that I'm good at, mm. but I but I'm always leaving room because I know I can improve. 
And in fact, I could even move that like to a 9.5 because I know that if I put the work in, I can get better. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset, which is a book written by Carol Dweck, which is really groundbreaking research, especially with raising kids. Like you basically tell kids that they worked hard at something and that's why they got a result. You don't say you're good at math. You don't say yeah. you're just naturally good at baseball or whatever. You say, wow, you must have practiced a lot, right? Because then they make the association that the more work they put in, the better they get. And that's true of everything. Every single, vert, like Michael Jordan, all that, those guys might have some natural ability, mm -hmm. but even Tiger Woods, like he was swimming in a club when he was like two years old, three years old. Well, Michael Jordan didn't make his high school team. Exactly. And there was another rejection, I think, by one of the coaches, right? Like, yeah. he's like, you know, you're not good enough yet, whatever. And he got super pissed and he's like, I want to show you, yeah. you know? So, uh, I would say nine for things I'm good at, things I'm not good at, you know, I probably put it like a five to six, but, but then I, again, I know that I can work on those. So it kind of just is whether I'm going to spend time to get better at it or not. Right. But, uh, I think the biggest takeaway for people is like when you can realize that no, no one's perfect, uh, you know, everyone is insecure in the, the various ways. And in our digital day and age, the people that are out there in the ring, like the Winston Churchill quote, he's like the guy that's in the, the, the arena. Like the blood, yeah. sweat, and tears. Like that's the guy that matters, right? Everyone else from the yeah. sidelines, the critics, the haters, whatever. Those those guys, they're the they're the the peanut gallery, right? Mm. Like, and the more you can realize that and just ignore that, or even use it as fuel, the better mm. off you are. Mm. I still haven't went yet, but I'm gonna get Ezekiel. You didn't go? No. Okay. Go. Can I, can I, can you uh, do a story for me? And then if you could like walk from kind of behind the light. Oh, look at the producer size and coming it. out. It's got to be set up the right <laughs> way, guys. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? You might want to move Logan's camera, but come like with the camera angle from behind the light and come around Instagram? and like, yeah, on Instagram. Just a just just story. A, a story. We yeah, just it. a story. Just the ten second. This will be closing out, guys. So I'll do the outro right now while uh, we get this going. But guys, make sure you so, like, like subscribe, camera. and move his, move his camera. Follow all these all these cool Don't, peoples, yeah. and we got more tribe chats coming at you every day. Pretty much every day we're gonna be doing these. I think I missed. Are we ready? Are we, are we ready for your story? Yeah. Or, or your your fifteen seconds <laughs> yeah. of wisdom? That's so weird. come from behind it, like more behind it, to where you can't see us. He wants you to start behind the, yeah. the light. So yeah. So back up. Okay. And then he wants you to yeah, fade exactly. in. There you go. Fade in and come around like the side. Okay. It's all about the angles. Um. So I'm gonna basically flip it on the head for y'all. Like, I'm gonna do ten out of ten because the stuff I'm really good at, I believe I'm the best. But the stuff I'm not good at, I'm 100% confident I'm not good at it. And I'm honest with myself that that's the case. So the confidence level doesn't go down, just my ability level does. So I'm always honest with myself and, you know, live in the opposite of fear. Like, I don't have any fear in my life. And that's what empowers me. Logan, so, he, he, he's too confident for us. We, we gotta go. Gotta, we gotta, we gotta go. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. So when, so when, because I've, I've hit a lot of bad things in business. Sure. I'm, I'm sure. He has too. Yep. Have you hit something that is just like? Yeah. What's like the biggest hit struggle? Hit you in the face. That's just like, I mean, like you couldn't sleep at night. Big yeah, stress. You know, I mean, yeah. has that happened to you? I mean, that's happened many times. And like the way I look at that is like when you hit a roadblock, basically your car is gonna stop, right? Mm -hmm. But there's there's always friction, like the resistance, like you said. And I look at it in the car analogy. You got to keep the gas going to go forward. You hit a roadblock, you're gonna stop. You can choose, you have one or two choices at that point. You allow resistance to pull you back and you start going yeah. backwards or you fill up your car, you hit the gas and you go again. And so, yeah, that's happened. Um, and yeah, I get down a little bit and I don't think there's any problem if something like bad happens, some, something bad happens to someone in your life to, to uh, be sad about it and feel it. But that next decision is what matters. It doesn't matter if you fail but that next decision does matter. If you choose to succumb to that failure or you choose to overcome that failure. Yeah. The obstacle's away. Two. To, that to, was to, one of my favorite To expand books. on what you're saying, when you hit the roadblock, what, what like Holiday recommends in the book and a lot of still mm. philosophy, whatever, is that thing that's in your way is the very thing that you have to overcome to get to the next level, mm. right? And so what a lot of people do is they'll hit a roadblock and they'll try to like meander around, like peek around the side. Maybe they'll throw a rope over and climb over. No, you literally have to bust through the freaking thing, right? You got to bust through the thing and win in whatever way that means. And then you're going to be better off for it. So I think that's a good place to wrap up, guys. Yep. Uh, subscribe, like everyone. All the socials will be below. And Comment below what y'all's, what, what, what book changed y'all's life. Yeah, Ooh. that's a good one. One book, right? 
One book. Yeah. Or ten. I actually I love book recommendations. You can comment hundred books. I'll I'll <laughs> buy them all and we'll load up the shelf. Okay, it's guys, thanks love. for watching.